Welcome everybody uh, to the last off-road workshop of 2022. Uh, hopefully we'll see you guys all next year. Um, <clears throat> tonight is all about vehicle lighting, uh, how to see stuff better. And um, we're gonna cover some, uh, some good ground and hopefully you guys have questions. And if you do, please raise your hand and ask. My name's Chris and uh, let's just get straight into it. Okay. Lights, there's all kinds of nonsense out there. Um, what I want to talk about is, is different ways to think about lighting, um, not just how to improve your Instagram followership, but more of, of how it makes life better for you, hopefully. Makes your backcountry experience better. Um, so <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can all see my beautiful artwork. I spent hours on this. Uh, but there's basically like three categories of lighting that I sort of box everything into when it comes to vehicle lighting. So it's driving lights, which is pretty self-explanatory, driving down the highway, uh, trail lights, and then camp lights. And if you kind of put, put things in those three boxes, uh, it, it will kind of help wrap your head around all of it. So let's talk about driving lights. Uh, so most modern vehicles come with headlights, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> and so, um, if you've ever been out on like a really long, lonely, dark stretch of highway, I'll use like Highway 31 that goes from Lapine to Christmas Valley. Just it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful drive during the daytime. At nighttime, you can't see anything because it's pitch black out there uh, except the stars. But it's just a long, straight stretch for the most part of just nothingness. And uh, even with your high beams on, you know, you're doing 65, 70, maybe more, I won't uh, blame you. But, um, you know, you'll, you'll find yourself starting to outdrive your headlights. And what that means is <clears throat> your lights are only illuminating so much of the road ahead of you. And then at, at a highway speed, your process, your brain subconsciously is processing the visual information that you're, you're taking in. And um, it's telling you you're good to go or holy crap, you should swerve because it's a deer. And when you start outdriving your headlights, you start feeling yourself not being able to see based on the speed. And it's not because your beams aren't going any farther, it's time. You're not, you don't, you don't have enough reaction time for your, yourself to feel comfortable driving at that speed. So even with high beams, you'll, you'll outdrive your lights at highway speeds on, on long dark stretches of highway. So a good set of driving lights is just that. It's, it's a set of lights that's designed to be hyper-focused <coughs> to shoot long, long, long distances, you know, up to a mile in, in distance. But, you know, when you're doing 70 miles an hour, you can do the math, you're covering a fair bit of ground every second. And so that just buys you more time. So your, your headlights are kind of just doing this thing, illuminating your lane, and, and you, you've got some pretty decent fall off where the light just starts dissipating. You're not really able to see um, our little friends, like the little bunny rabbit here, or this little guy, the squirrel. And then sometimes you, got, you get some sneaky ones, uh, especially in Highway 31, uh, in between the juniper trees and the ponderosas, where you'll have a deer or an elk that's just kind of hanging out in that shoulder, and you'll spook it as you're approaching, and it'll step out into the road, and that's a big problem. So <clears throat> with your driving lights, uh, hopefully it'll illuminate that for you before it becomes a problem, gives you time to see it, respond to it, bring the vehicle down to a safe, controlled speed, and deal with the obstacle that's in the road. Um, obviously, you know, you wanna be cognizant of oncoming drivers, because you know, you'll absolutely destroy somebody's eyeballs <laughs> if they're coming at you with uh, some, you know, some big driving lights. But, um, you know, on a lot of these backcountry roads, uh, you're, the, you're, you're the only person out there uh, a lot of the time in the evening, especially this time of year where there's just, there's nobody out and it's pitch black by, you know, it's not even six yet and it's just dark. So. Driving lights <coughs> are gonna fill in. So you've got your, your, you've got your headlights here in this pattern. Driving lights, when you look at the beam pattern, they're actually quite thin, right? So if I've, if I've got a pair of driving lights here, they're quite thin, but the thing is they will shoot long, long down range, you know, a good half mile to a mile. Um, and as that, as that beam, I'll move over here so you guys can see my beautiful drawing. As that beam shoots further and further down the, the road, it'll start illuminating you know, more of the shoulder beyond what your, your normal car headlights and high beams will do. So that's kind of what you're thinking about. If you think of lights as like sort of just 
pools of uh, light on the ground in front of you, your headlights only go so far that, that are effective. Your driving lights will kind of, where your headlights fall off, they'll pick up and then keep sending the light further down. And that's where something like, you know, a big set of spots, any, anything like that, really, really is just fantastic for shooting long, long distances. Um, so it's just buying reaction time. Driving lights, uh, people, you've, people will mount driving lights all over their vehicles, and there's really kind of only one right way to do it. And if you think about where your headlights are positioned on the vehicle, uh, there's been a lot of um, scientific studies that have been conducted based on each vehicle on where those headlights should sit in relation to the driver's seating position and where your eyeballs are gonna be. Um, and that light will be the most efficient position. So your headlights, the mounted where they are because of, because of safety and just because of all the research that they've done on, on the particular vehicle. So a manufacturer puts a lot, a lot of effort. Uh, there's a lot of safety regulations that they have to fall into. So you think, okay, well, if that's where my headlights are mounted and I'm driving and I use those for driving and if I'm using more light for driving, maybe I should mount them in a similar area on the vehicle where the headlights are. So if you look at, um, I don't really have any good pictures, but well here, here's my old Forerunner. I've got my driving lights mounted on my bumper right in line with the headlights. They're just, just inset a little bit. And it's perfect because from the drive, driver's position, that light doesn't reflect on anything on the vehicle other than just shooting down the road a long, long distance. And it's about the same height as my headlights. Um, if you put driving lights up high on, on your roof, you start running into light spilling um, from that reflecting onto your hood and that kind of ruins your night vision um, when you're driving. So you don't want any light shining on your hood of your vehicle. You're, you're literally just ruining your ability to see better at night. So have, have driving lights, the best place to put them is where your headlights are and that's just in line or in that general vicinity if you can. And you know, on, on a lot of stock vehicles, it's really, really hard to do because it's just not a lot of places, but you can get kind of fancy and um, you know, you put stuff behind the grill if you want, um, or if you do have an aftermarket bumper, obviously you can mount it on there. There's companies that make little light tab brackets that come out through the grill and they allow you to put it there, but that's a great place to do your driving lights. Now, uh, real quickly, I wanna talk about kind of wiring those things in. So just like your high beams, your driving lights, you want quick access to, because if you see the lights of an oncoming vehicle, you only have a, a second or two before that person's blind because <laughs> you've just destroyed their night vision. So you want to have it on a switch that's really, really accessible or wire into your high beam switch on, on your vehicle. So that way when you just tap your high beams, those will go on and off. And that's really, really easy because it's in a, in a location that you're already used to uh, hitting. Uh, you don't have to figure out where another switch needs to go. Um, it just gives you the ability to toggle them quickly and effectively. Um, so you can splice into that circuit that the vehicle already has, um, into that stock or whatever, however it is on your vehicle configuration. That's a great way to do driving lights. So there's one more thing I want to talk about when it comes to driving lights. Uh, fog lights. Most vehicles nowadays kind of, sort of, maybe have an option for fog lights or come with fog lights. The annoying thing I find with factory uh, fog lights is they, there's some safety rule somewhere that said when your high beams are on, your fog light should turn off. Well, it's like, well, I, know, I still like seeing where the fog line is and, and whatnot. Um, so sometimes uh, a vehicle, when you hit your high beam, you'll see that your fogs turn off, super annoying. But uh, so fog lights are going to do some exciting things where, you know, you've got the, obviously the fog line of the road. That's where the fog light definition came from. It's to illuminate this line. So a, fog, a good fog light is going to be super, super low and it's going to be aimed out kind of like that. And the fog light beam, if it's aimed properly, should fill in sort of this zone here, right? If you can see my beautiful drawing, sorry, it probably is going to get a little bit more of that tree. I just didn't want to draw on it because it's a beautiful tree. But um, so your fog lights are going to fill in your foreground. Um, and they're going to they're gonna be nice and full and bright, sort of where your, your headlights don't really pick up until out here a little ways. But this is all going to be the fog light world, so you'll see that fog line. So we get some of these beautiful nights where, you know, you're driving home from work um, this time of year and it's just sopped in, especially down here in this little Tualatin Valley area 
it gets super foggy really quick, or you'll be driving down I-5 and it'll just be pea soup. So the fog light is a great way to where your headlights aren't doing a whole lot for you, but that fog light will at least illuminate that fog line so you at least can like sort of drive by braille and see, be like, all right, I know where that line is on the road. I'm still on the road. Uh, so it's a good thing to have. Um, if your vehicle didn't come with fog lights, um, there's a lot of little, great little options for fog lights that you can put on there um, that can help kind of cut through that pea soup. Um, you'll, see, you'll see fog lights in, in, in clear, and you can also see fog lights in amber or a yellow color. Um, and to get a little nerdy with uh, lighting color temperatures, amber is a part of the wavelength that uh, is a little bit better at cutting through fog and kind of rain and also dust and, and whatnot. It's pretty good at cutting through that and illuminating what you need to illuminate, uh, where white will tend to reflect a lot of the particles in the air back at you and are, is not as effective. But any fog light's gonna be better than no fog light. And you'll find that sometimes your headlights are just doing nothing for you except just illuminating the white wash of fog in front of you. So fog lights are something to consider in the driving light plan. Um, and again, if your vehicle didn't come with fog lights, a lot of vehicles had them as an optional upgrade. Um, so it depends on the trim level of the vehicle, but there's oftentimes a harness that's already sort of just chilling in the back of the bumper. And so fog light installs are actually pretty, pretty quick and easy. And usually there's like a blank somewhere that you can plop in a, you know, like a factory style fog light switch and then you're, you're good to go. So pretty, pretty easy to, and, a, and a good one to, to get into for driving lights. We've got, we've got kind of our road covered. Uh, we're, we're pretty good there. When you're on the trail, um, <coughs> there's some different aspects about lighting that some of these things may not be working totally for you. So when you're on the trail, our trails are nice and twisty. Sometimes they have nice big hairpins in here. So if you're coming around and going this way or whatever, again, your beams, your headlight beams are stuck in this position. <coughs> so if you're making a hard hairpin turn, oftentimes you're, you're not looking through the windshield, you're looking through that side window, trying to see where you're, where you're going. And your headlights aren't gonna do a whole lot for you. Uh, fog lights, they're, they're all still you know, only gonna illuminate that foreground, right? <coughs> But nothing's, nothing's showing you if, if, the, if this trail continues on out this way and you want to make that left turn. Um, this is kind of a bad example. The truck should be here when you're turning. But, you know, you get the idea. Um, you're kind of you're looking out that window and, and it's, it'll be pitch black over here. You just don't have any light. Um, so when you're on the trail, that's where a good set of ditch lights comes in. Uh, so the whole term of ditch lights is it's going to illuminate the ditch, right, on either side of the vehicle. And I, I love to aim ditch lights from the B pillar, which is the pillar that your door, driver's door slams into. The A pillar is the one that the windshield's on. So it should illum illuminate the B pillar and then all the way forward to right where your fog light beam sort of quits, right? So you're now illuminating this whole area on both sides of the vehicle. Boom, like that. That's where your ditch lights are gonna do some exciting things. Now, you've got full illumination of everything from really your 180 peripheral out of both windows for a nice tight turning all the way around and then long distance for driving on the trail. Ditch lights are typically mounted uh, on the A pillar or on like a hood bracket uh, thereabouts on a vehicle. With a ditch light, you don't want a huge fixture. You really don't want to get into anything this big. Uh, that is as big as uh, I would go with a ditch light you know, anything like that. But you want something that's a really, really wide beam pattern to give you this nice wide spread. You're not looking for distance because you're not doing 100 miles an hour like this at full lock through your window. If you are, you're, you've got some issues to deal with, but um, you just need something that's nice and wide that can fill in that B pillar all the way to your fog light beam. And so <coughs> mounting it on your A pillar is one of the best places and, and keeping that light footprint small. So that way when this is, when this is on your A-pillar, you know, your A-pillar is kind of hiding the light and, and this isn't creating more of a little blind spot kind of right in that A-pillar position. So um, when you're sitting in that driver's seat, you don't want to actually see the light. You just want to see the A-pillar. You don't want the light obstructing more view. 
So you want to make sure those, those rock lights are aimed to the left on the driver's side and way off to the right on the passenger side. I see so many trucks down the road that have their <coughs> ditch lights mounted pretty much forward, which isn't spectacular because it's doing really one really horrible thing for you, and that is it's illuminating your hood. When I'm driving, I don't need to see my hood. It's there. I know it's there. It didn't go anywhere. And I, the reason I know it's there is because my headlights are still light in the road. So my headlights are still there. So that means my hood's still attached, which is a good thing. So when I'm driving down the road, and I have a white truck, so it's, it's, it's the worst at this, I don't want any light spilling onto the hood. Because again, like I said earlier, it ruins your night vision. That, that glare that's coming off the hood is just like, oh, it's horrible. And, and having rock lights pointing forward, that beam is just right making this like horrible V right on top of your hood. And it's just, it's just distracting as a driver. It's not doing you any favors. And you're, you're, you're not, you know, you've lost all this area here that you're not illuminating. So those rock lights, pan them out, right, to either side. And, and the good way to line it up again is, is at night, get your fog lights turned on and then aim that rock light left until it almost is perpendicular to the, the vehicle and right to where that beam is filling in. So you should have a continuous pool of light from fog light to rock light and back again with that with still trying to keep it off the hood. If it's splashing on the hood, it's not doing you any favors. So there's all kinds of fun little kits out there uh, that give you brackets to mount it to the hood or somewhere around the A-pillar. A lot of newer vehicles now, like the new Jeeps, the new Broncos, they actually have mounts that are for light accessories right there from the factory. So it's super, super easy to do. And, and again, just don't get something monstrous. You don't need something huge, just something nice and subtle that can illuminate that little, little area um, in the ditch. So um, a lot of lights will come in a spot or flood beam. And all that means is it's, uh, and <coughs> it's the shape of the, the beam pattern. So a spot beam is going to be more narrow and designed for long distance. A flood beam is going to be a lot wider, designed for shorter range, but width. So it's just controlling, it's just a, a type of lens that controls where that light falls when that light is uh, illuminated. So do I need a spot? Um, for driving lights, yes, absolutely. Spot is fantastic. You want long distance around camp or trail lights. You usually want short distance, but I want to see the world around me. So floods a little bit better. And the way you can tell is <coughs> most companies are going to say something on the box somewhere that says what type of light it is, what type of beam pattern it is. They'll usually have some fancy little graph like this that shows the beam pattern. Also shows how much light uh, output you get at certain distances. So really nice to know. Um, there's all kinds of um, stuff that's printed on boxes. Uh, what I like to look at is the lighting instrument itself. So anything with a nice smooth lens that's not dappled like this, that's going to be more of a spot beam. So it's taking <coughs> all of that light and focusing it as efficiently as possible. Whereas something that's dappled like this, guy here or any of these, that's going to start scattering the light and giving you a little bit wider pattern. Obviously anything over here with like side shooters like this and, and a dappled lens, that's just a wide beam. That's just saying, I'm going to illuminate the whole world for you. Um, and then some of these guys, you know, all smooth in here. And this one is going to be a little bit of dappled. So you've got <coughs> some options also in driving lights. This we call like a combo. So it's kind of a spot flood combo. To confuse you even more, light bars do the same thing. If you see here on this section of the light bar lens, these reflectors are all dappled, these are all smooth, and then these are dappled. So the light bar is giving you kind of a nice center section that gives you a nice punch, and then the outer bits of the light bar gives you a little bit more flood and peripheral. Um, another good trail light is um, that your headlights and your uh, driving lights may not be doing is actually like a nice big kind of flood, flood light or a big light bar up high on the vehicle. And what that's going to do is just give you a good wide swath of light sort of all over the place. Um, and then you'll have the long distance with your driving lights, but you'll kind of get this whole big area like that lit up. 
But just be careful, again, anything that's mounted up on the hood here, or sorry, on the roof of the vehicle, you either want to set it back if you can, so the top of your windshield will shadow or flag off the hood. Because the last thing you want is this light spilling and reflecting onto that hood again. It's just not doing you any good. So that, that's another good <coughs> light for the trail. Another uh, driving situation <coughs> that you may run into on the trail is you may have to go backwards, right? And we all know that your backup lights on all stock vehicles are a joke. They're, they don't do anything to illuminate the world behind you. Sometimes you, if you ride your brake light a little bit, your brake lights are gonna be brighter than your backup lights. So having a set of little cubes or something mounted low in the bumper, a pie, wherever, just something to illuminate the world behind you is, is really, really nice because then you can, and again, I would go with a flood, so you can really kind of start illuminating that much of the world. I don't need distance because you're not going fast in reverse <coughs> unless you're like a stunt driver, um, but you really kind of want to see this world as much as you possibly can. So good floodlight, you know, I want to see if there's like a big boulder here or whatever. Um, you know, we could put the little squirrel maybe over here you know you want to be able to see him you want to run him over so a good a good light a backup light uh, is really really nice to have when you're on the trail and <clears throat> a good way to do that to, to hook that into your system is you could obviously have it on its own separate toggle switch but i've seen people even put it into their reverse light switch so when you put the vehicle in the reverse obviously your backup lights you know come on from the factory you could tie into that circuit that also then would switch on your backup lights, you know, for floods. Um, or if somebody's tailgating you, you could just have them on a bypass switch and just give them a little, <laughs> little, hey, back off, you jerk. Um, but yeah, <coughs> another, another good area of light. Um, and also, honestly, I use, I use my backup lights a lot, just even in, in camp. So I have mine on a, um, on a, on a second switch so that I can just override and throw them on whenever I want and <coughs> illuminate the whole world down here. They're nice and low, right? It just illuminates the ground and everything behind me. So when I've got the tailgate open, the hatch open, whatever, and I'm just unloading gear or whatever, I'm illuminating everything behind the truck. So that's another good kind of crossover into camp lighting. Um, yeah, backup lights, good thing to consider. One last light I want to throw out there um, is a, a little, um, You'll, you'll hear the term rock light. Um, and it, it comes from like the, the rock crawling industry where <coughs> folks would want a light that sort of illuminates the, the tire and the wheel arch area. Uh, so that way from the driver's perspective in like a little buggy or something, you can see your tire, your whole tire is illuminated. And that way you can see where your tire placement is when you're driving on obstacles. Uh, for most, most backcountry touring vehicles, you're not doing a whole lot of rock crawling, but if you are, uh, they certainly work for that. But I find rock lights just really, really handy as, a, as like a brighter puddle light. So like when you open your doors, <coughs> some vehicles have a, a, a step light or a puddle light that illuminates the ground underneath the vehicle. So you can see what, you know, what's kind of right in this area when you, when you first get out. So if you have rock lights, if you've got one you know, mounted in this wheel arch corner here, uh, one in the front and maybe one mid, mid chassis that illuminates the ground there. Ah, it's such a nice little light to have on the trail. Um, the other thing too is, you know, in a tight squeeze, if you're driving through some tight uh, areas, it is nice to have those on so you can lean out your window and see some tire placement. Um, or you can, you know, see where you're, if you have a, like a slider or something, you'll see where all that is. You're just illuminating the immediate area around your vehicle kind of on the ground area. Really, really handy to do. Those I just throw on like an auxiliary switch somewhere in the vehicle and call it good. <coughs> but you can see on the trail, we've, we've kind of done a 360 for the most part of illumination because when you're driving on the trail at night, you kind of want to see the world around you. This diagram is not to scale, just so you know. Uh, I don't want anybody to have any misled conceptions of, of hey, that deer is like, just the same size as that rabbit. So what's going on with your world? Yeah, we don't want to <coughs> we don't want to lead you astray. So the asterisk is there. All right, um, I want to talk about camp lights. Um, so we, we've got a lot of light going on. This is a lot. 
Camp Lights is a combination of some of these and also not some of these. So the whole thing with Camp Lights is to illuminate the ground and the camp. You're not in the driver's seat. I don't need to see anything long distance downrange in front of the vehicle. I want to illuminate the ground. I don't necessarily want things mounted out and shooting out into the world. I just want them pointing to the ground. So like this image here, you've got some great lights mounted up on the bed racks that are just illuminating down under the ground. This one's a little high in my opinion, but down on the ground, great thing to do. Uh, your rock lights, that's a great camp light. Again, you're just illuminating the immediate ground around the vehicle, because right here, if you're working off <coughs> the tailgate of this pickup, I can't see if there's a big, you know, hole here, or a big rock there, or a stump. <coughs> I don't want to trip over that when I'm making dinner or something out the back of the truck. So having some lights that illuminate the ground as you walk around sort of the business area of the vehicle, which is usually out the back of, of your vehicle. It depends on how your rig is set up, but it's good to have some lights for that. And lights that I like to use are th very small lighting fixtures. Um, honestly, little guys like even these rock lights make great camp lights because you can squirrel them away in different places in the vehicle. You know, if you've got a pickup with a bed rack, you can mount them in the bed rack to illuminate the bed off to the sides, <coughs> right? If you've got a roof rack or whatever, mount them up on the rack. Oh yeah, this is a nice big picture. Why look at that when you could look at this? Um, you know, mount them up on the rack so you can shoot the ground around you. You can mount them underneath the rear bumper. You know, it only takes one to illuminate the whole world around the rear bumper. So just a really, really good, clever light placement for where you're at in camp. And, and, and a good way to do it is just, you know, at home at night, just park your truck in, the, in a driveway or in a big open area and just, you know, walk around the vehicle and you can kind of see where you need light. Um, so camp lights are gonna be short distance and usually just immediately around the vehicle. Uh, the other thing you consider too is, um, you know, if you use, if you have some lights up on the high, you could use them for illuminating, you know, I guess that'd still be a trail light even, just illuminating the, the trail and looking for camp spots. But I'm thinking just the vehicle's parked. I just want to illuminate just the ground kind of around that for camp lights. That's really where I'm working. I don't want it shining high and illuminating the poor person in the tent. Don't want to shine it high and, you know, make everybody that's sitting around the campfire kind of mad, right? Because you're kind of, you know, ruining their vibe going on. Just around the vehicle for accessing the vehicle, approaching the vehicle. And so you don't trip and fall in a gopher hole or something, twist your ankle, because that's not fun. You don't want to do that. So <coughs> camp lights, camp lights, are, are going to be being used when the vehicle is usually not running. So camp lights are something that I, if you're going to do them, highly recommend a secondary battery to run them off of so you don't drain your main truck battery. Um, so something to think about there. Uh, another thing that I like <coughs> to use these kind of camp lights for is, let's say you have a, a tent on top of your vehicle, you know, even like this one here. And, um, you know, it's about 4.30 in the morning and you really, really have to go potty. Um, you could have them, uh, your camp lights, on a system that you can control with your phone. So you just grab your phone real quick and go on, and this illuminates the whole world around you on the ground. So that way when you're stepping down your ladder, you can already see what's around you and, and, and around, and you can do business at 4.30 in the morning when it's pitch black. And um, yeah, it's not just for before bed, it's in the morning too, so. Pretty straightforward. It's just sort of, again, thinking about aiming the light properly for the use that it's really designed for. Um, <coughs> um, and then subsequently, it will increase your Instagram score or whatever people do now. Is that it? Is that right? OK. Um, all right. So we've got lots of lights going on. Um, <coughs> don't think you have to do all this at once. Do what you need and will get the most use out of. So if you do a lot of night driving, get some driving lights. And that's the first thing you should do. If you're doing a lot of night trail driving, get some trail lights. If you do a lot of in the camp camping and you need some camp lights, do that first. Um, 
If you don't do any of these things, then don't do any of them. You just saved a bunch of money to put in the gas tank to do other things. Um, so if you, <coughs> yeah, if you don't drive at night, driving lights are going to be pointless. Uh, trail lights are going to be pointless. Camp lights you could still probably use unless you don't do any camping. So um, another thing to consider though, if, if you tow like a boat or a trailer with some ATVs or something on it, you know, uh, a good set of lights pointing backwards to illuminate the trailer or the hitch area, that's kind of a nice thing to have. So that's something else you could do as well. But yeah, okay. So we figured out, you know, I just want to get a good set of driving lights. I do have to do a little bit of driving at night and uh, that's all I need, Chris. So um, you've, you've told me some good things. I'm excited. I want to get some driving lights installed. What the heck do I even do? Well, again, you want to think of the, the type of fixture and <coughs> we've got a lot of examples on the walls. Anyway, these would be good driving lights. Uh, I would do a spotlight well before I would do a light bar for driving lights. Light bars just don't have the forward distance punch that something like this does. Um, so again, something like that you could have, have uh, or do yourself wired into your high beam switch. So it's just easy, quick and easy, like I said earlier. Um, or <clears throat> depending on your lighting plan or your 12 volt accessory plan, you may want to consider doing something like one of these aux beams or Switch Pro or an S-Tech or the 8,000 other flavors of companies that make uh, a solid state switch system. Uh, I'm gonna talk about these. This isn't necessarily a brand specific thing, but what's nice about most of these types of systems is you've got eight switches that you can map and program to whatever you want. And you're only having to run one single cable from, you know, through the firewall of the vehicle into the driving space, you know, for you to access. So that makes wiring really, really nice. And then this box would live under the hood somewhere. And then anytime you add a 12 volt accessory that you want to control with a switch, you'd simply just patch it into one of these circuits, whatever circuit you need. And that corresponds with something on here. You can label it with all kinds of fancy fun labels. Um, you know, if you want to have your uh, seat heater on a switch, you could do that. Uh, what other fun things do we have? Um, a welder. This has a welder's light, um, <laughs> a horn. Uh, you can do all kinds of fun stuff. Where's the fish box? This one doesn't have it. Anyway, <clears throat> it just makes uh, all of your lights, you know, if you're gonna go kind of the full, the full meal deal here, it puts all of your auxiliary lights and switches in one spot that's easy to find, that's always where it needs to be. I like things with tactile switches. I don't like the touchscreen things. And it's because when I'm driving, I don't want to have to look at a screen to figure out what button I need to press or what portion of the screen. I want to keep my eyes on the road and just feel and be like, boom, that one. I know it's that one, right? I can feel what switches what. So that's just me. You know, th think about that when you're driving. Um, and the other thing is, I don't want this mounted somewhere where it's just right in my face. And just, because these are usually backlit when you turn your, uh, your headlights on. A lot of them you can just adjust the brightness, but Gosh, what another light that's just blinding you in your face. You know, have it down low somewhere where you can just kind of reach it, or whatever. But these are just a really, really nice way to start organizing and thinking about sort of the long-term plan. And you don't have to have eight circuits already thought out. You can just be like, I just want a set of driving lights, but I might add something a year or two down the road. That might be a good way to do it because then you don't have to have like a row of like little toggle switches somewhere on your dash. Um, a lot of vehicles will have <coughs> like a switch knockout where it's like a flat plastic plate and you could just plop something like this in there. Um, it will just mount into a factory switch location. So that's kind of nice. You can, there's a way to do that as well. Um, that's again, something that we we're happy to kind of consult you with and talk about your vehicle, talk about your lighting needs and we can sort of go through that. Um, if you're a do it yourself kind of person and you want to tackle wiring, um, I think it's a, I have this weird thing where I, I actually enjoy doing it. It's, I find it soothing and satisfying and it's somewhat just an enjoyable way to sort of tune out the world and just you know, do a little work on the truck. But um, it can be overwhelming and there's some special tools that make life a little easier. Um, but there's also some best practices. So one of the things is when you pop the hood of your truck open <coughs> and you see the engine, just look at any of the wires that are going to and from the engine. They're gonna have some kind of loom on the wire to protect the wire. 
And it's not just from heat, really the big ones from the wire chafing on something. If you've got a bare wire and that's chafing on something metal, it's not gonna take long before that wire uh, wears through and then shorts out. And then you're either gonna catch your vehicle on fire or your whole circuit's gonna pop a fuse and then your, your uh, accessory won't work. So <clears throat> a lot of vehicles are going away from this split loom is what the stuff's called because it's split down the middle. I don't need to hold this anymore. It's split, right? So that's split loom, so you can just lay it around the wire and it closes around. So that's pretty cheap. Um, a lot of vehicle manufacturers are going to a nice mesh loom. I actually like using mesh a lot better. I find it's easier to install and um, you can always put some little heat shrink on the end, which keeps that frayed end from fraying and just makes everything nice and neat and tidy. And then you can anchor that down in the vehicle. But whatever you do with wiring, um, always think about uh, a, not necessarily redundancy, but just ways to, to protect the circuit. So have, a, have some kind of fuse in line somewhere. So if you do have a short or something, uh, that fuse pops before it starts cooking and creating a fire on a vehicle. Um, you don't want to do a, a truck barbecue um, out in the middle of nowhere. That's not a fun day. So wiring is something that needs to be just methodically done. Uh, it's something that you can certainly do yourself. I would watch a few very boring videos and, and just kind of get some ideas and do something very, very simple. Um, something that you're not having to run wires through the firewall of the truck or something. Just do something very basic so you can kind of get your hands uh, dirty and <clears throat> get it sorted out. Or just come talk to us. We'll, we can talk you through it again. So always make sure that you're using good quality connectors uh, with any vehicle. Use good quality waterproof plugs. Um, these are uh, what we call Deutsch connectors. Um, they are kind of an industry standard for the uh, off-road uh, world. Uh, you just got a, a really good positive click and then that plug is nice and protected and sealed up from the elements. And so they make them in different pin outs. This happens to be a three pin. This one was a two pin. They make them in all kinds of different plugs. Really, really good plugs, fairly inexpensive. You can get a whole pile of them off of Amazon for next to nothing. Uh, they do, uh, if they don't come assembled, they come in a bunch of little parts. So they kind of take a little effort to put together. But I really, really, really like having a good connector. Every light on your vehicle or every accessory you have, <coughs> it's good to put a connector on it. So that way, if you're going to remove something or take something off or want to swap something out, you can just un undo a plug and you have to cut and resplice wires every time. So this is called a Deutsch connector. And like Deutsch, Deutsch is in German. That's kind of the, the style of plug. There's a lot of good connectors out there. This is sort of like an, an industry standard for the off-road world. So a lot of auxiliary lights will actually come with these already included. In fact, these all I robbed out of um, some of our lights. So our lights come with them. Most, most brands of off-road lights will come with good waterproof connectors. And the other thing too, you know, here in Oregon is, um, this is something I like to do is uh, get what's called uh, dielectric grease. And it sounds really weird that you're going to put some grease on an electrical connection, but um, it's what, what's nice is it will keep uh, electrical contacts from corroding. Uh, it'll also kind of create a nice bit of sealant in there as well. It won't, it's not a glue, so it won't glue this shut and not be able to, to operate the, the plug anymore. But it just, it just puts some goop in there that just keeps the crud and the moisture and whatnot out. So definitely something to think about with your electrical connections on your, on your vehicle here in the Pacific Northwest, just because we have all that moisture and road grime that gets into plugs. Definitely use good heat shrink on all your ends and cable ends. Uh, make sure you invest in a thousand bag quantity of zip ties, because <coughs> anytime you're doing a wiring project, you're going to use a billion zip ties. And just make sure everything's just nice and neat and tidy. And the other thing too is I like to have all of my um, auxiliary items on my vehicle. I like to have all the fused links, usually in one easy to access place. If it's something like this, or if it's something like a big blue C fuse box or something, have it in a spot that you can get to. Just like in, on your truck, you know, you're going to have a fuse box either under the kick panel uh, inside the, the driving area, or you're going to have a big fuse box somewhere in the engine compartment. But label things, right? So when you're out in the back country and it's night and some, something's not working, you know what circuits what, just make life easy on yourself. But that all takes time. 
and it takes a little OCD-ness to do it properly, but um, you know, you just want stuff to be secure uh, and not vibrate and destroy itself from bebopping down dirt roads in the middle of the night. Um, but again, if you're just like, I don't care about the wiring, I just want to press the button so the thing goes flashy, lighty, things happen, that's totally cool too. Um, you guys are all really, really busy people and your time is worth what it's worth. So if that's something that um, you know a reputable shop can help you with, definitely seek that out. We can do that. There's a lot of good places in town that can that can do good 12 volt auxiliary lighting. So that's <coughs> that's something that just needs to be done right. Don't 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 do it, you know, sketchy. Don't try to do the whole thing yourself if you've never done wiring before. Um, it really needs to be done properly because you could catch your vehicle on fire, and you don't want to do that. Um, the other thing that's kind of nice is uh, <coughs> we've got these, you know, switch systems. We also have some kind of sort of preset looms, and this is just literally just a big old rat's nest of nonsense that um, already has like a switch and a relay and all the connectors and everything for a certain type of light. There's a wiring diagram in the back. Uh, just it's just a time saver. It saves you from having to make all the connections and build your own harness. So we have these as a, as a convenience as well, um, just to try to make your install, your do-it-yourself install a little bit easier. It really comes down to just being safe, right? I want to, I don't want to plow into a deer and, or have to make an emergency maneuver super fast and roll my truck. Um, but, you know, I want to be able to drive safely and just see at night uh, for what the highway speeds are. And, you know, uh, it just makes it easier to drive if you're doing a lot of night driving. So thank you guys. I hope you guys learned something about lighting and different ways to go about it. Uh, appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys for the next one.